tapping into the collective intelligence. What does it mean? It means that every stakeholder group that you deal with, that you are a leader of, or that you interface with, that there's a whole bunch of different people with a whole bunch of different backgrounds, with a whole bunch of different talents, experience, and interest. And that, that for me to be effective in leading today, I have some way to draw out all that intelligence or operational knowledge or vocational expertise or community insight. I've got to have some way to bring all that information out of people. Now, why don't people want to participate? Why do we invite them to meetings and when they show up, they don't have ideas? Well, a lot of times it's because they haven't been asked. Or they might not trust the process. Remember, trust is a big part here. So we want to have some way that we can tap into the collective intelligence where they trust the process. Now, again, collective intelligence. It's not the Borg from Star Trek. What is it? It just means there's a lot of different people with a lot of different background, with a lot of different talents, experience, and interest, and we've got to have some way to bring it all to bear. Why? Because that's where we're going to get the best plans. And we get residual impact that's awesome. Self-determination, self-reliance, a sense of pride, and all the things we talked about in the coaching session. All right, let's get straight to it. So basically, i got to use my handy-dandy whiteboard here. So basically, I've got a group of people in a room. And some of you, as I start this, will say, oh, this is kind of like brainstorming. But you got to listen to the nuances that take it to the next level. So the first thing we have to do with the group, and I would do it like this. I'd say, hey, everybody, thanks for being here. We've got to solve blank problem. Or we've got to come up with an idea for blank. So we're going we're gonna to agree upon the objective of the dialogue. Clearly defined objective. So we're going to clearly define what it is we're trying to solve. Then what are we going to do once it's mutually agreed upon? Then we're going to agree on a time limit. Next 20 minutes, we're just going to throw out ideas. For the next 20 minutes, we're just going to throw out ideas. We're not going to analyze the ideas. We're not going to pick apart the ideas. Every idea is going up on the board. Every idea for action and so on. Okay, and then we just start throwing out ideas and 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 throwing out ideas and, th and then we come to the end of the 20 minutes. Now typically what we would do next in most brainstorming, the next thing that we would probably do is start to pick them apart. Ah, that's not, that won't work and this won't work and so on and so forth. And what happens is we start hammering people's ideas. And you know what? That's one of the reasons why people don't want to give their ideas. Because they're afraid that their idea will be picked apart. And oftentimes, people pick apart other people's ideas, and it has nothing to do with the idea itself. It has to do with who said the idea. So this is an important piece. The next step is to combine and refine. Combine and refine. So we're going to combine the like-minded ideas or the similar ideas. We're going to combine them. Why? Because we depersonalize the idea. It is no longer any one person's idea. We combine and refine before we assess and analyze. That's an important key in building trust. People are going to be more likely to share ideas in the future if we depersonalize the idea and we're not attacking someone specifically. Because sometimes you attacking my idea is you attacking me. All right, so now that we've combined and refined, now what? Well, we take those combined and refined ideas and we begin to assess and analyze them and their effects. Well, if we did this, these things would happen. And if we did this, these things might occur. And if we did this, those things might occur. And what exactly, what was meant by these couple, the, these, these ideas? So we begin to refine, I'm sorry, we begin to assess... We begin to assess the ideas. And then we begin to prioritize those ideas for action. Well, I guess this would be the best one, and then maybe this one, and then that one, and then this one. And we rank them in what we think would be the best approach. And we come up with the number one and our number two. Once we've come up with our 
best ideas, we now begin to agree on some action steps and timelines. Remember in the supplemental video, Mastering the Power of Change, I gave you a way to implement change within an organization or a department or a group. The same process holds true here. You then ask the stakeholders, remember, these are their ideas. These are their ideas for action. Now we take the top two and we say, okay, what would, what would the action steps have to be for this to occur? Well, we would have to do this and we'd 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 have to do this. And then I say, well, what would be some timelines that we could, you know, attach to these that would be realistic? Well, this date, and then this date, and then this date, and then this date, and then this date. Okay. So we've got action steps, and we have a timeline. And who built the action steps and timeline? They did. The stakeholders. So the stakeholders uh, gave us some ideas. We, refine, we combined and refined those, we assessed and analyzed those, and then they picked the ones that would, they think would be the, most, the, 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 the highest likelihood of success, and then they quickly built an action plan and attached some timelines. What now? Your only job is to follow through. Your only job is to follow through. What's the point? The point is that you just built a, a plan that they will buy into because they built the plan. They identified the ideas. We, were, we combined those like-minded ideas. We then assessed them to depersonalize. Once assessing, they picked the ones they thought were best. Then they gave you some, some timelines and action steps for its implementation. And now my only job is to say this. What can I do to support you? How can I help you? What can, what can I do to assist you? It's their plan. It's their plan. Now, I would suggest to you, you could use this same approach when putting together a budget. You could put, utilize this same approach in a community dialogue, in a, in a successive dialogue of community meetings that would assist in building a sustainability plan. And on a community note, just remember, community engagement is not coming up with your own plan and then shopping it in the community going through the motions and the exercise uh, to, to get people to say, yeah, we like your plan. That's never effective. Instead, let people build the plan. Now, they, may not, they not, may not be able to provide the desired outcome. They may not be able to provide the, uh, the why behind the change or the, uh, or, or the need or the, or, or the issue or the challenge. But give them some level of self-determination. Give them some level of self, that, that creates some level of self-reliance. In the engagement approach to planning, the, the significant impact beyond just good plans is immeasurable, in my opinion. And what you'll come to find is people will own that plan. They won't sabotage your plan. It's their plan. And because I've let them build the timelines and the action step, the action steps and the timelines, the accountability level increases significantly. We walk out of the room and they've built their plan. Now, over the next couple of days, I'm gonna give you some ideas of how to set up the room. I'm gonna give you some ideas of questions you could ask to elicit responses that you might want. What kind of questions do you ask if you want emotional responses, fact-based responses, and the like? So over the next couple of days, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm going to send you more emails. I'm going to give you two days to watch this email, and then we'll send you more Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Take care, everybody.